Things were pretty much doom and gloom in Birdland when Kyle Bradish was hit by a line drive in the ankle and had to leave Monday night's game in the second inning. But then something magic happened. Seven and a third hitless innings from the Orioles bullpen and the O's win it two nothing over the Rangers to get back to 500. I'll break it all down. Plus talk more about the fallout from a Bradish injury coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. And welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb. And coming up on today's episode, we're going to recap what was a Pretty crazy win by the Orioles, to be honest, in Texas on Monday night, taking down the Rangers 2-0 to open up a three-game series in which their starter, Kyle Bradish, goes down with injury in the second inning. The Orioles scramble with a plan, but the plan was the right one. They shut out the Rangers, allowing just one hit and win the game to get back to 500. I'll get you the five things you need to know from the Orioles' win, plus... We'll talk about what the O's do later this week because with Bradish out, the Orioles used Tuesday starter Tyler Wells as a reliever Monday. So how do the O's shake up the rotation for the rest of the week? And then long term, even if Kyle Bradish has to miss a couple of weeks, we'll talk through what the Orioles will do with the rotation for the rest of April. But that's all coming up on this episode of the Locked on Orioles podcast, which is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So let's start with honestly a pretty amazing Orioles win. I mean, listen, it's Game Four of the season. They won two nothing against the Texas Rangers. It doesn't seem like anything amazing, but to have what happened to them in the second inning, and then one hit that team. A Rangers team that just swept the defending champion Philadelphia Phillies over the weekend. They were 3-0. and And in the first two games, the Rangers scored 11 and 16 runs against the Phillies pitching. To hold them to one hit in that situation after the Orioles had given up nine runs in each of their first three games in Boston. Kind of a wild turn of events. And the Orioles win it 2-0 to open the series with a victory and get to two and two on the season. So I'm going to get you the five things you need to know from that Orioles win. And the first thing you need to know is that, well, the bad news from the night, that Kyle Bradish left with injury. Bradish was looking great in this game. He had a one, two, three first inning with two strikeouts where his breaking stuff looked filthy. Struck out Marcus Semien and Nate Lowe with filthy sliders. Then he gets into the second inning and allows a couple of base runners with one out. And then just a nasty line drive right off the ankle. Radish it ricochets off him, offered over to Mount Castle at first, who picks it up, steps on first base for the second out of the inning. But Bradish goes down. It turned out to be a 104 mile per hour line drive hit by Jonah Heim, actually a former Orioles farmhand off of Bradish. He got up, but then immediately limped off and left the game with the Orioles training staff. And so at that point, you're thinking, you know, it's a 0-0 game in the bottom of the second. Bradish making his season debut. The stuff was looking really good early in that game. And you look around and you think, what in the world are the Orioles going to do? Not just now, but in the future. Well, in terms of the injury outlook, we did get a little bit of good news during the game. It turns out that Kyle Bradish's initial x-rays were negative. There is no fracture in the ankle, at least from what the Orioles saw Monday, he'll get further tests. It was the right ankle that was hit by that line drive, kind of the right foot and ankle. That is the one that is on the pitching rubber that he pushes off of when he drives toward the mound. We'll get more information. Even though the x-rays are negative, I wouldn't be surprised if Bradish at least went on the 15-day injured list just to make sure he's okay. I mean, there's going to be bruising and it's going to be uncomfortable, even though he didn't break anything because that ball was scorched up the middle. But you're looking at the game at that point. You're thinking... How are they going to do this? The Orioles just burned through the entire bullpen, giving up 27 runs in three games 
over the weekend against the Red Sox. They got 12 combined innings from their three starting pitchers this weekend. Now you get one and two thirds from your starter today because of the injury. But somehow they did it. And the biggest reason they did it is the second thing you need to know from this game. Tyler Wells was honestly a magician out there for the Orioles. After Danny Colomb, to give him credit, did a nice job. Came in, got out of that second inning, posted a scoreless third, kept the game 0-0, and the O's got a run in the top of the fourth. And then they turned it over to Tyler Wells out of the bullpen with a one nothing lead in the bottom of the fourth. And the reason this was surprising was that, well, Tyler Wells won the fifth and final rotation spot for the Orioles. He was the scheduled starter for Tuesday's game to make his season debut. And instead, the Orioles said, the best case of action here may be to just bring Wells out of the bullpen because, frankly, they didn't really have a long man. Mike Bauman threw 43 pitches on Sunday. Austin Voth, 22 pitches on Saturday. Keegan Aiken pitched a couple of times over the weekend. You just didn't have a long man to go to. And so Tyler Wells was your guy. We'll talk about a little bit later why exactly they went to Wells and what they do next with Wells obviously not starting today. But Tyler Wells was amazing. Amazing. The only base runner he allowed reached on an error in the fifth inning. Other than that, five scoreless, hitless innings in relief from Tyler Wells. Two strikeouts, no walks, through just 47 pitches with 33 of them for strikes. Only four balls were hit hard against him. He just carved up the Texas lineup. To get five scoreless innings in 47 pitches, I mean, think about it. that is less than 10 pitches per inning. The MLB average is around 15 or 16. That is ridiculous to get through that lineup that fast, and especially a lineup as good as Texas is. Unreal stuff from Tyler Wells. I mean, you got to give him credit. And this is the role I thought he would have this season because I thought Grayson Rodriguez would make the rotation and Wells would be in kind of this piggyback role. He certainly looked good in that role. I mean, only five whiffs on 27 or 25 swings, but just – not a lot of hard contact at all. He threw a lot of cutters, which was a pitch that he has really kind of added this offseason. And all of a sudden, it was his second most used pitch. It was sitting kind of 89 to 91. The four-seam fastball was was looking pretty solid through the changeup, through the curveball, through the slider. He was just mixing things up, Tyler Wells, and, and it was working against this Texas order. And he certainly saved this bullpen. Next thing you need to know from this one is that, well, the Orioles' offense was the show, really, for the O's over the weekend. Not really the case in this one. Just two runs on four hits. But Gunnar Henderson was certainly the star, and he finally got on the board on Monday. Now, despite Henderson not getting a hit in the three games in Boston, he made his presence known. He walked six times in those three games, so he was certainly on base, but still did not have a hit. Well, that ended on Monday. Came up with a single in the second inning for his first hit of the season. It was a ball that Henderson scorched off the bat into right center field for a base hit. And then he came up in the fourth inning, and speaking of scorching a ball, my goodness, Henderson going oppo taco off of Texas Rangers starter John Gray, a home run to the opposite field, a solo shot, his first of the year that gave the Orioles a one nothing lead, 106.6 miles off the bat, Traveled 408 feet for the solo homer. Just a bomb from Gunnar Henderson to put the Orioles on top. And he was the only Oriole who had a multi-hit game in this one. Ended up with a two for four with that home run. Did strike out twice. But the only other two hits were an Adley Rutschman single in the first inning. And then Jorge Mateo hit his first home run with a solo shot in the fifth inning of this game. Those are the only Orioles hits, but it turned out to be enough. Now, in that lineup, the fourth thing you need to know from this one is that despite Kyle Stowers not getting a hit, he did make his first start of the season on Monday. Finally got into a game as a pinch hitter in the ninth inning Sunday in Boston, ended up striking out. Gets his first start here in Texas on Monday. He's got the start in left field, hitting sixth in the order between Gunnar Henderson and Adam Frazier. Now, he did go 0 for 3 with two strikeouts, but he did walk in the seventh inning, did reach base once, and he made a really, really great play in the field in left in the fifth inning, line drive off the bat of Adolis Garcia. Stowers going back to the wall, makes a nice leaping catch up against the wall to rob Garcia of extra bases. Now, Stowers did come out of the game late, and it was a little interesting. So you figured, you know, Austin Hayes and Ryan McKenna were both on the bench to start this game. 
So you figured with Santander and Stowers out there, at least one of them would come out in favor of a defensive replacement because I think most people agree, even with the gaffe on Saturday, that McKenna and Hayes are both better defensive outfielders than Santander and Stowers. But interestingly enough, Hayes replaced Stowers defensively in left field in the bottom of the ninth. But McKenna did not replace Santander, and Santander stayed out there defensively in the bottom of the ninth inning. Just uh, just a little bit interesting to uh, see that at that point. It's not like Santander was going to be due up soon if the game got to the 10th. I mean, he was going to be due up sixth in the inning. So interesting to see Ryan McKenna not go out there. But Stowers did finally get himself into the starting lineup. And then the fifth and final thing you need to know from this one, I said it on Twitter uh, before the ninth inning. I thought the Orioles should have stuck with Tyler Wells. He was rolling along only 47 pitches, five hitless, scoreless innings. He was looking amazing. And, you know, you're burning him as a starter until his next turn around. So 47 pitches isn't much. If he was going to start on Tuesday, he was going to throw more than 47 pitches. So I figured he's rolling along. Why not send him out there? But Brandon Hyde goes back to Felix Bautista with the middle of the order due up for Texas, 2-3-4, Corey Siegler, Nathaniel Lowe, and Adolis Garcia, a lot of guys who have done a lot of damage and have done damage against Bautista in their careers. But he went to Bautista, who did struggle over the weekend, and he did get the save on Thursday, but gave up two runs. Then, of course, should have had the save Saturday, didn't, then gives up the walk-off two-run homer to Adam Duvall. But Bautista, the fifth thing you need to know from this game He looked like his 2022 self, finally, in his third outing of the year. Bautista goes 1-2-3 against the middle of the Texas order with two strikeouts. Strikes out Corey Seager on three pitches, gets him swinging on a nasty changeup. Strikes out Nathaniel Lowe on three pitches, and then gets Garcia to ground out to second on the first pitch he throws to him. Just seven pitches in the inning for a quick one, two, three, ninth. Nobody needed that more than Felix Bautista. Got three whiffs on the splitter, which was nasty. Fastball Velo was up. He was 99.6 was his minimum. Threw one pitch at 100.7. That was his hardest pitch the season so far. Felix was looking like his old self getting the save for the Orioles. And it was kind of a miraculous win, to be honest with you. Like when you get five outs from Bradish, after all the work the bullpen had to do and all the struggles it had over the weekend, I just could not believe the Orioles won this game 2 nothing. But they simply almost no hit the Rangers. I mean, the only Rangers hit in this game was a Jace Young infield single in the bottom of the second inning off of Kyle Bradish, where Gunnar Henderson just kind of double clutched on the ball that was deep down the line at third base when he picked it and then made a high throw that pulled Mount Castle off the bag. It was the right call to call it a hit, but with a really good throw, Henderson could have got him at first base, which means the Orioles were kind of close to no hitting the Texas Rangers in this game. And honestly, I can't believe it. Shout out to Bradish before the injury. Shout out to Danny Colomb. Shout out to Tyler Wells. Shout out to Felix Bautista for getting the O's this win. But of course, even despite the win, The big news is still that Kyle Bradish left with injury. And it's good news that his x-rays on his right ankle were negative, but still doesn't mean we know what the Orioles are going to do moving forward. So coming up next, we'll try to figure out what the Orioles will do with the rotation this week. Because, well, Tyler Wells was supposed to start today on Tuesday. He pitched five innings on Monday. He's not starting on Tuesday. So coming up next, we try to figure out what the Orioles do with the rotation for these final two games of the series in Texas. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Now, for me, I'm not a guy who gets a season ticket plan. I live pretty close to Camden Yards. Sometimes it's just the day of, I figure I'm going to walk over there and buy tickets online. But it can be stressful. You know, you're doing it last minute. You want to find a good price. Sometimes you're not able to find a good price. And buying tickets to your favorite events, well, it shouldn't be stressful. Well, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater that is near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets, start getting hyped for all the fun that you will have. And they've got tickets to every game. Orioles opening weekend, this weekend against the Yankees, they've got it on game time. It is the place for last-minute ticket deals. You don't have to plan months in advance. You can even get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. So snag the tickets without the stress 
with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So the Orioles come up with a pretty remarkable win, two nothing over the Rangers. On Monday night, they one hit Texas to win the first game of the series and get back to 500. And the reason why it was so remarkable is that, well, they had a taxed bullpen and Kyle Bradish left the game with injury after recording only five outs. And somehow the Orioles bullpen goes seven and a third hitless. But with Kyle Bradish out, Brandon Hyde looked down at that bullpen and said, I don't have a lot of options to get me through this game and try and win this game. The guys who could give you length, Mike Bauman threw 43 pitches Sunday. He was not available. Austin Voth threw 22 pitches on Saturday. Would have been available, but probably not to give you a lot of length. And Keegan Aiken threw multiple times over the weekend. Again, would have been probably available because he only threw eight pitches on Sunday, but not for more than an inning. So none of your long guys were really available. So Hyde's best option was... Let me just use my Tuesday starter, Tyler Wells, who's worked as a reliever before, who hasn't pitched all season because, you know, was the number five starter and was due to start Tuesday's game. He just said, let's throw him out there and we'll figure it out. And it worked. He goes five hitless innings. The Orioles win the game. But now they don't have a Tuesday starter. So now we try to answer the question, what do the Orioles do Tuesday? Well, in terms of options from AAA, if the O's do end up putting Kyle Bradish on the injured list, or if they just make a different roster move, because they're probably going to have to, to get another pitcher up here. The general options you would look at in the Norfolk rotation, most of them are not available. Grayson Rodriguez, Bruce Zimmerman, and Spencer Watkins, all, or two of the three, have started games for the Orioles. Three top options probably at this point. All started games Friday, Saturday, Sunday, over the weekend for the Norfolk Tide. So they are just not going to be available to start this game. So your next best option would be Norfolk's scheduled Tuesday starter. And that is none other than D.L. Hall. Now, the Orioles could certainly kind of manage his innings and call him up to start. But he's not really built up. I don't know if they're going to want to do it. And I think the easiest thing, and the reason why Brandon Hyde did go to Tyler Wells out of the bullpen Monday, is because Kyle Gibson can, and I think will, start Tuesday's game. Now, Gibson is scheduled to start Wednesday's game, the series finale, but because he started opening day on Thursday and then there was the scheduled off day Friday, Gibson could actually pitch on Tuesday on regular rest. He would have his four days off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and pitch on Tuesday. And with Gibson being the 35-year-old veteran who's been around the block plenty of times, I don't think it'll affect him much to just move his start up one day, especially with it being on regular rest. So my prediction at this point is, Kyle Gibson is probably going to start against his old team on Tuesday. Now that solves the Tuesday problem, but all it does is just kind of kick the can down the road to Wednesday for your issue because you can't move the Orioles number two starter, Dean Kramer into that Wednesday spot. I know he only threw 56 pitches in his start on Saturday, but you're still not going to start him on short rest because with him starting Saturday, if he started Wednesday, it would only be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of rest. That's three days. You're not doing that, especially not now this early in the season. So Kramer would still be scheduled to start Thursday's home opener against the Yankees, which means even if you start Gibson Tuesday, which I think they'll do, you still need a starting pitcher on Wednesday. And you don't absolutely have to make a roster move, but it might be needed. I would say there are three options for the Orioles to look at for this Wednesday game. It is a day game as well. It's a two o'clock game in Texas. Option number one is the least likely option, but is the most fun option. That is your call up Grayson Rodriguez to make the start. With Rodriguez starting Friday night for the Norfolk Tides, that gives him his four days off and would put him on regular rest to start the Wednesday game. Now, the reasons they're not going to do that are A, the Orioles sent him down for a reason. They said he wasn't ready for the big leagues. B, if he starts on Wednesday, you still would have to give him his full year of service time and not get that extra year. And C, he did struggle a little bit with the walks in his first start in Norfolk on Friday. 
The Orioles are absolutely not calling up Grayson Rodriguez. They're especially not changing the plans just because of an injury to another pitcher. He's not coming up. So despite me wanting option A to happen, it's not going to happen. Option B is you call up your other big-time starting pitching prospect, and that is D.L. Hall. Hall is scheduled to start Tuesday's game. Essentially, you just switch him and Drew Rahm. You have Drew Rahm start the Tuesday game for Norfolk, and then you call up D.L. Hall on Wednesday. Now, you have him start the game, just like he was going to do in Norfolk on Tuesday, and you put the same pitch count, same innings limit, that was going to be on him in Norfolk. So it's probably somewhere around 50 to 60 pitches, probably no more than three-ish innings, maybe four was what he was going to do in Norfolk. You're still able to build him up just like you would have done in Norfolk, except he gets to help your big league team. It's kind of a win-win. The only drawback is because you're building him up, you probably wouldn't keep Hall in the rotation while Bradish is out for however long he's out. You're not going to risk using the bullpen more and more as you build up Hall. So that plan would be you call up DL Hall. He starts the game. And then you have Austin Voth and Keegan Aiken ready behind him as long men, as long as you don't have to use them on Tuesday. Then after the game, you send Hall back down, call up a different reliever, and you continue Hall building up his workload on the same kind of rotational schedule in AAA Norfolk. I think that one's possible. But I don't know if the Orioles want to, once again, just like they did last August, call Hall up, have him start, and immediately send him back down to AAA. So I think option C is what they're going to do. As long as the Orioles don't need to use Austin Voth in relief on Tuesday, if Kyle Gibson starts and they can get through the game using the rest of the relievers, remember the only true relievers they used were Danny Colom and Felix Bautista on Monday. So some more guys will be available on Tuesday, which is good for the Orioles. As long as they don't use Austin Voth, I think you start Austin Voth in Wednesday's game. Now, he's only pitched once this year. It was 22 pitches in relief on Saturday. That gives him Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, three days off, plus not a big workload on Saturday. So you could expect to get at least four innings out of Austin Voth if he's pitching well, if he starts Wednesday, and maybe even five innings if he's efficient, if you can get four or five innings, you have Keegan Aiken behind him, you have some more relievers, you can get to the end of that game as long as Kyle Gibson gives you some semblance of length if he starts on Tuesday. I think that's what the plan would be. We will see if that's the plan, but that would be my prediction at this point. But that's just for later this week. And that's not even Bradish's turn in the rotation. That's just the Tyler Wells turn because he had to use him out of the bullpen. So even if Bradish is just on the IL for a short time, or even if he just has to miss one start, the Orioles still have to make some decisions here. So coming up next to finish off the pod, we'll talk about what the O's do long-term if Bradish does have to miss a little bit of time. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is also brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Now, this is... Probably the coolest game I've played on my phone in a long time. Now, I always you know, thought, hey, maybe I try being a major league GM. And I played fantasy baseball, but ultimate baseball GM is different. And it turns out being a major league GM, well, it's not that easy. But if you've thought about the same things, about managing your own franchise, go and download Pro Baseball GM immediately. The game allows you to manage every aspect of a franchise. You play through your seasons, simulate through the games, but you hire the coaches and staff. You manage finances, you scout players, draft players. You're managing personalities. You're making injury decisions. You're going through free agency and the trade deadline. Every part of your team, you make that decision. And the game is completely free. You can play it offline, play on the go, and it doesn't really drain your battery either. And the really good thing about it is you can compete against your friends. And again, once you download the app, you don't need Wi-Fi to play, so you play it anywhere. This game's kind of addicting as well. And Locked On Orioles listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com. Scan the code or look it up in the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. So the Orioles win it 2-0 over the Rangers on Monday night, but they do lose Kyle Bradish. And as I record this here, just around 11 p.m. Eastern time 
on Monday night. What we do know is that Kyle Bradish did get hit in the right foot and ankle area with a 104 mile per hour line drive. What we do know is that he left the game in the second. What we do know is that x-rays for negative on his foot and ankle, but the Orioles will go through more testing. And Brandon Hyde did just say after the game that no decision has been made yet on Tuesday's starter. But as I talked about in the last segment, I think it'll be Kyle Gibson and then probably an Austin both plus bullpen game combination on Wednesday. Now, you got to figure out what you have to do next, because at the very least, even if all things are fine, the ankle is going to be sore for Bradish, and he'll probably miss at least one start. And I do think the Orioles will at least put him on the 15-day injured list just to be safe. He'll miss a couple weeks and then rejoin the rotation. So if that's the case, the Orioles will need to figure out something pitching-wise. Now, if they use the plan where Gibson pitches Tuesday and Voth works on Wednesday, then you can go Dean Kramer on Thursday on his regular rest. You have the off day Friday after the home opener. And then Cole Irvin goes Saturday. And what you can do is use Tyler Wells on Sunday. He throws 47 pitches on Monday. He has Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He would still get extra rest and get to throw on Sunday. So that would make things a little bit easier. And when you can use Wells on Sunday, you can then kind of skip Bradish's place in the rotation, at least for now, and you can go right back to Kyle Gibson on Monday against Oakland, because if Gibson does start, this means only if he does start Tuesday, he gets Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off, and Kyle Gibson easily can start Monday against Oakland. Then you can go Dean Kramer on regular rest Tuesday against Oakland, but Wednesday against Oakland is where you run into some trouble. It would be Cole Irvin's place to start in the rotation, but if Irvin starts Saturday, he's not going to have enough time off. It would only be three days of rest, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So next Wednesday, April 12th, is the first time you would really need another starter. Now, between now and then, if the Orioles do put Bradish on the injured list and go with kind of the Voth bullpen game on Wednesday, they would most likely just call up another reliever. So could be Yenier Cano, could be Nick Vespi, could even be a guy like Bruce Zimmerman to work out of the bullpen and give them some length if they do go with that option. But they'll need a starter by April 12th. And you'd have to think if they're not going to call up Grayson Rodriguez, which they wouldn't, because he would still get that full year service time if they called him up April 12th. So you'd have to think Spencer Watkins would be that guy who comes up on the 12th and makes that start. Now, if Watkins does make that start, you still may have to make him make one more start, but that's okay. The Orioles trust Spencer Watkins. They showed that throughout last season. They still do. And I think they'd be fine with him making two starts. Then you get Bradish back later in the month. And that's kind of how I think the Orioles will sort things out if Bradish does go on the injured list, but we don't know, you know, he may be pretty much fine. Just a little bruise. They push his start back a little bit. And by the time we get to the 12th, you know, there's always the chance that the Orioles could just kind of roll with one less pitcher until the 12th. Bradish is ready then. And he starts that game. I don't think they're going to do it because you don't want to shorthand yourself in the bullpen. I would think they'll probably put him on the injured list. If there's any kind of injuries, they can get an extra bullpen arm up here, but it's always possible He does not go on the IL. It's just good news that x-rays were negative, and hopefully the good news continues. And Bradish, who looked really, really good in those inning and two-thirds, and I think he's going to have a breakout season, can rejoin this rotation soon. But I'll be back with the podcast tomorrow, and of course I'll have any updates if we get them on Kyle Gibson. Any updates, or Kyle Gibson, on Kyle Bradish. But it could also be about Kyle Gibson, because I'll be recapping Tuesday night's game, and I would think... Gibson starts that game. We'll also talk about any updates to the Wednesday pitching plan as well. That's all coming up on tomorrow's episode. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.